Get a boat for Brigade Boats. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> hey guys, Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats. In today's video, I'm going to show you from start to finish how I built this 14 foot John Boat and Bass boat for a customer. Stick around, I'm going to show you how I did it. For this project, we start with a bone stock 1436. My customer drove over five hours from Nashville, Tennessee for me to do this build. What started as a modest budget build quickly escalated into something a bit more. More than once, my customer quoted Joe Exotic as he added more items to the build list. I'll leave that list in the video description with links to a majority of the parts used in this build. And don't forget to stick around until the end of the video to see the customer's reaction when he gets this completely overhauled John boat back. Woo! My customer did me a real solid and brought me the boat already sandblasted. With minimal prep work, it was off to paint. I called upon my partner in crime once again, Chris from ATF Hydrographics. We sprayed the boat in typhoon gray paint by the fine folks at One Hit Wonder. The paint job was finished off with their matte clear coat, and once the paint was cured, it was back to my place to start the interior portion of the build. The first thing I had to do was gut the factory benches to make room for storage and the live well. So I popped the bench tops and pulled the foam. Now I can start framing, but I need to do it strategically. This framing package would feature no through-hole rivets, which meant structural support would come through vertical uprights. Therefore, I'd have to start at the bottom and frame my way up. Closed cell sheet foam was glued down. Next, 060 sheet aluminum was cut to fit and riveted down under the front deck area and inside the future hatches. This created a solid base to frame off of and doubled up as the storage floor system. And now it was time to frame the front deck. I framed everything in the boat using 1 16th inch angled aluminum and 1 8th inch tube aluminum for the uprights. Everything is riveted together using 3 16th inch rivets of varying grip ranges. I did a full in-depth walkthrough video of this boat's aluminum framing package, so if you're interested to learn more, then please check it out.
I extended the front deck past the factory middle bench location by framing another hatch to mirror the bench location's hatch, if that makes sense at all. You'll see it clearly at the end of the video when I show the finished boat. After putting the final touches on the front deck framing, I focus my attention to the rear of the boat where I drop in a custom live well. The tub of this live well is built from a Plano Sportsman's trunk that I got on Amazon. The trunk is more narrow and longer than your standard storage totes, and the material really holds up. That's a fact, Jack, because this is the same live well design and parts list I used in my personal John Boat build years ago. I did a live well series on that build for the Top Gun John Boat, so check it out for more information. I first cut the trunk to the proper height, and then I test fit it in the rear bench area. As you can see, I framed along the inner perimeter of the bench walls to give me some meat to permanently mount the tub to. Then I started on a more complicated part, the live well drain. Because the height of the live well is limited due to the boat size, the tub needs to go as low as possible. That doesn't leave much room for a proper drain. Yes, I could just install a drain and drain water into the bottom channel, but who wants fish water in the bottom of their boat? So I combine a kayak drain plug to an elbow fitting to accept half inch hose. This will direct water out of the live well and through a hose which exits the rear plug hole. I'll do a demo at the end of the video. Next, making the live well come to life by adding the plumbing parts. The live well had to be pre-assembled first, then dropped into place and permanently mounted. I added the pump in spray head, the overflow, Atwood recirculation pump and screen, and the flow right pump out aerator combo. I used 3M5200 Fast Cure to seal everything that I mounted. With parts mounted in the tub, framing in place, and closed cell foam board down in the bench as a base, I was ready to drop the live well in and mount it up. Inside the bench, I purposely left framing out on one side on the end and removed the dry fitted flow right combo, dropped the tub in, and began tying into the framing using plenty of rivets. Once locked in, I permanently mounted the flow right combo and then framed the final section in. With the live well finally in, I moved on to installing the Atwood Tsunami 800 GPH pump through the transom. This will connect to the live well with hose and fill it with water. The outside was fitted with a stainless steel mesh screen. Part orders were constantly coming in for the 1436 build. Here I received gas struts, battery trays and straps, an onboard charger, finger pulls, and much, much more. Before I can frame in the rear deck, I have to fit the batteries in the rear of the boat. And before I can do that, I have to modify the battery trays for proper fitment. So I trim them and attach all three battery trays together to make a single unit that will permanently attach later in the boat. This boat won't have a gas outboard, so the batteries are in the back to distribute weight. Once I test fit the trays and batteries, I can now frame in the rear deck section.
With the aluminum framing complete, it was time to do the decking. My customer opted to use wood for the decking on this project to save on material cost. Custom aluminum hatches and decking can currently run $15 to $2,500 extra for a project like this. Wood, however, dramatically increases the labor hours and is more time consuming for me to pick up material, cut, space evenly, reinforce, sand, and seal properly. Aluminum is shipped to me and is plug and play, so pick your poison. For this project, I'm using sanded half inch exterior grade plywood. I cut all the hatches and surrounds, I drill holes where necessary for finger pulls, and then I add some runners underneath the hatches to strengthen and prevent plywood warpage. Everything was lightly sanded, and then it was time to be sealed. For more details on how to plywood deck your own boat, I have tutorial videos on my channel, so check them out. Once I got every wood deck part 100% complete, it was time for resin. I coat every part generously in fiberglass resin. I've used this resin in the past and have had much success with it as a water barrier. It's important all parts are cut the right size with proper spacing for carpet, runners are mounted, and holes for latches are pre-drilled prior to the resin application. If you coat resin and then go back and cut or drill a hole in the part, you're now creating an area where water can absorb through. One trick I like to do is cut half inch spacers and use them throughout my deck fabrication to create proper reveals I will need later for carpet. The reveal size can vary depending on the carpet, but for 16 or 20 ounce bass boat carpet, a half inch reveal works great. With all the wood coated, it was time to sand. Sanding knocks down the slick resin and imperfections and gives a rough surface for the carpet glue to bite to. For the hatch bottoms, the sanding ensures I'll have a smooth finish after final paint. I siliconed around the top of the live well filling any voids. With the live well 100% complete, I can now cap it with a custom splash guard. I cut the splash guard out of 090 sheet aluminum and it was inset into the framing. The splash guard was attached with rivets and we'll get some finishing touches later on in the build. Here's the splash guard all mounted up, as well as a shot showing off the finished rear framing and battery setup. With that behind me, it was now time to do some carpet. I wrapped all the decking parts in 16 ounce bass boat carpet. The carpet was purchased from tinyboatnation.net. I've used their carpet in 16 ounce and 20 ounce in the past on projects, and the quality is always really nice. The color in this boat is charcoal. I went by my standard application MO by using Robert's carpet glue for all the flat parts, and for the hard cockpit return areas, I used contact cement. On the back laps, I used my ear-powered staple gun with quarter-inch stainless steel staples to attach the carpet. I did paint the underside of the hatch lids in matte gray to match the boat paint finish on the exterior prior to wrapping them in carpet. I just showed the custom switch panel fabrication, which was one of the more highly detailed parts of this build. I filled all the rivets around the splash guard and cockpit with filler as they would need to be sanded smooth in preparation for vinyl wrap. Then it was off to rough wiring the entire boat, getting all the leads ran for accessories and installing all the boat's lighting. This needs to be done before any of the decking or hatches are mounted permanently. I wired the boat with Anchor Marine marine gray wire and 14 gauge duplex. I used solder connectors and heat shrink wrap on connection points. I installed blue LEDs throughout the boat inside hatches and within the cockpit. 
All the rough end leads are ran to the location the switch panel will eventually be mounted when the final wiring time comes. Next up was vinyl wrapping the cockpit and the splash guard. I'll be honest, this was way harder than it looks on film. I have prior experience with vinyl graphics and this process was still tedious for me to do. There's definitely a lot of room for error when you're doing vinyl like this. Inside the cockpit, we went with a 1080 carbon fiber vinyl from 3M. For the splash guard, other interior details, and the exterior registration numbers and decals, we used a blue color from Oracle that I purchased from my local vinyl shop, Red Barn Graphics, here in Jefferson, Georgia. The carbon fiber wrap definitely gives this cockpit some pop without being too overbearing. The blue splash guard and accents throughout give the boat some contrast and add a bit of color. I went ahead and wrapped the custom switch panel I made in the blue vinyl wrap as well. I carpeted inside the hatch areas underneath the front deck. I also carpeted inside the other storage hatches within the build. For these areas, I used contact cement to attach the carpet down. Next up, I started mounting the hatch lids. Every lid in the boat would get mounted using stainless steel offset piano hinges. The install is a bit tricky. The hinges on the hatch need to mount to the framing, which then gets covered by the decking surround. I first mount the hinges to the hatches, then get the hatches where they need to be with the decking surround, then carefully remove the decking and permanently mount the hinges to the framing. This needs to be precise, otherwise the decking will not go back into place properly. I use stainless screws to attach the hinges to the hatches and rivets to attach to the framing. The hatches are finished off with finger pulls and gas struts. I mounted the cockpit floor. One thing I like to do is take my stainless self-tapping screws and pre-paint them in a matte gray finish. I then use an impact drill to bury them tight and deep into the carpet and wood. If done properly, the screw head will be completely hidden. I mounted a NOCO Genius onboard charger and then I began the final wiring process. I won't go into great detail here because again, I have step-by-step -step wiring videos on my channel. It was now time to permanently attach the forward front deck section. The stainless steel screws work great to tie through the wood and into the aluminum framing. I also installed all new Atwood nylon cleats in the original mounting locations on the four corners of the boat with all new stainless steel hardware and lock nuts. Next up, mounting the trolling motor. I'm using a Nate's Custom Boats and Accessories Universal Trolling Motor Mount. It's adjustable to the desired height and can be cut to fit your needs. The mount is riveted to the front of this boat and bolts down to and through the deck and framing with an adjustable support bracket. Once in place, I simply bolt up the Minn Kota edge to the bracket. I added quick connects to the trolling motor power wire which is routed through a Nate's Custom Boats and Accessories recessed foot pedal tray. The tray features a hole in the bottom that you can mount a fitting to and a hose that will drain water to a channel in the bottom of the boat. Once the quick connect was wired up and all the wires were routed, I attached the recessed pedal tray to the front deck and then I mounted with the, the trolling motor mounted I used a Minn Kota transducer mounting kit to attach the transducer for the graph. With the transducer mounted up and the wiring ran, I moved to the back of the boat to install a 60 amp circuit breaker for the trolling motor. Once that was in, the last thing I needed to do was hook up all the batteries for the final install. There's two Group 31 batteries powering the trolling motor and one Group 27 battery for the electronics. Now that I no longer needed fuse box access, I installed the final piece of decking in place. 
I added some gator guards, gator skins up front to protect the new paint job where the boat makes contact with the trailer. Cousins got the boat loaded up today and headed to Nashville to drop it off, meet up with Jake. He hasn't seen anything, so I can't wait to see his reaction. Anthony Jones, <laughs> Brigade Boat. Good to see you, brother. What's up, man? How are you, man? Good, dude. Appreciate you. You don't mind me filming, here. dude? No, let's go right ahead, man. You go ahead and look at it. If you don't mind, I'll film. Yeah, kind of, yeah. you do your thing. No pressure. And then, then I'll turn it off, and we'll do all the. Oh my goodness. Then we'll do all the final. Look at this. Yeah. Came out killer, man. Oh, man. Guys, if you're sitting there wondering, should I get a boat from Brigade Boats? <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> don't even don't even hesitate. Just stop <laughs> thinking about it and do it. <clears throat> oh, man. You're right. I love the uh, the blue covering here on the live well. Oh, shoot. Okay. oh man, this is amazing. You like it? Yeah. Ready to go fish. Oh, you even put this on here for me, too. It looks complicated. <laughs> <laughs> man, it, you're right. The carbon fiber in the cockpit is. Uh, yeah, that, that came right. out real sweet. Oh man, this is just uh, above and beyond what I was imagining. This is amazing. Any last words? Man, I'll tell you what. I thought about this for a while, found this guy on YouTube, and. Uh, 
did this deal and uh, very, very happy with every every aspect of it. So, again, get your brigade boat. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm ready to go catch some fish now. Yeah, nice. I'm going to film you drive off into All the right. sunset. All right, Anthony. All right, man. Thanks, Thanks bud. Yeah, man. On to the next one, cousins.